I must proclaim the good news. I want you to underline the word good news because I'm going to talk about it, you know. But the good news is about the kingdom of God. I must. I must. Somebody say, I must. This is Jesus talking. This is Jesus talking. I must. Now, I missed you, man. For some time, I've not seen you in church. I yo, yo, missed you. All right. I must. All right. Okay, now look at because that's the purpose or the reason why I'm sent. Okay, the good news is gospel. I must preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. That's the reason why I'm sent. All right, there are other gospels. All right, now when you understand and you don't, okay, okay, then because this is the last verse going into chapter 5. All right. Don't separate it. All right. So he's, because he said that, okay, so in chapter 5, he's going to be teaching the gospel of the kingdom and then demonstrating how the kingdoms of Eden's economy work. All right. And then how it supply and produce in the life of people that release their trust into the kingdom. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So in chapter 5, he met a group of people, all right, with their business. Peter, he has a fishing business, all right? And then he was contrasting two systems. One is the Babylonian economic system, the earthly system. The second is the kingdom of God's system or the Eden's economy. So he's contrasting how it works. So he allowed us to see how the earthly or Babylonian economic system works. All right. Okay. I'm going to show you in, in today's teaching, you know, because we're going to define some terms, you know, that might be um, uh, circular, circular, but not circular, you know, completely, and then hook it up into what, okay. And so he now received a trust of that business. Remember, they toiled, the Bible said, all night and caught nothing. All right. Jesus Christ knows where the fish are. In other words, the kingdom that is in the inside of you knows where the resources are. If you don't understand the kingdom, you will be beating the air, looking for. Then Jesus said, no, don't be beaten. Seek first the kingdom. When you get it, Jesus knows where the fishes are. Am I talking here? All right. Okay. So there was a transaction in that place. And then, of course, we, okay. All right. When you don't know where your provision is. All that you simply need is a word like the one that Jesus gave Peter. Because it's not money that you're looking for, it's a word that you're looking for. All right, okay, word is a spiritual resource. And you cannot access word, which is a spiritual resource, with a physical resource and a limited resource. Time is a limited resource. Muscles is a phys physical resource. Listen to me. Wealth is not a physical resource. It's a spiritual resource. Abundance is not a physical resource. It's a spiritual resource. All right? Okay? So, and if you're going to access or activate a spiritual resource, you have to. So when you come to the imagination, the conversation, word... Then you're coming in a level and eyes have not seen what God has in store. Am I talking here? The major problem that we have is that we want to spiritualize material. Jesus Christ wants to materialize the spiritual. It's the spiritual. And everything that you're seeing in the material world actually came from the spiritual. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And the word was God. Nothing that's right now, the thing that you are sitting on, all right, your thinking is physical, 
All right, if I take you back, it's actually a composite of atoms, molecules that you can see. It is when they condense in, then they become physical. Everything has to move. Am I talking in house of refuge? I say, am I talking in house of refuge? Okay, so when you come in and then all you are thinking is physical, you are going to have serious problem. I was talking with my son, you know, you know, and this is what he said. He said it's very difficult to be poor. said becoming rich is one of the most easiest thing why will somebody say that okay so you have to be convinced about some certain things now when you don't know where provisions are you need a word so jesus told peter exactly what to do where to do it and how to do it and the major problem with us is that we don't know the where we don't know the how and we don't know the what. So when you read from, you know, in chapter 5, all right, said, let's go out and catch fish. That's the what to do. He knows. And then let's go out into the deep. Let go into the deep. That's the where. And then let down your nets. That's the how. The what, the where, and the how. Your king knows, and in the kingdom, it is only in the kingdom that one person has control of everything and can cause it to switch hands overnight by just a word. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. The reason why people don't subscribe to the kingdom is because it takes time to germinate. It takes time for seed to germinate. So people are not patient. But it takes time for seeds to germinate. All right, okay. And then you have to understand, all right, uh, um, crown dependence. So when you spend time with God, he's going to show you where the fish are. When you, okay, he's going to drop an idea. He's going to give you a word. He's going to, am I talking, a premonition. He's going to press on you. But you have to seek Based on this story, the entire fishing business entered a new economy. Because at that point, you see two different economies. One, which is sweat equity. You toil all night. The other is the kingdom. Okay, it enters the kingdom economy. Watch. Peter did not upgrade his boat into a yacht no same boat same business no upgrade he did not upgrade his nets same nets but at the word his prospect changed when the kingdom stepped into his boat same boat same nets same business in a twinkle the prospect of that business changed when something just stepped in. Come on, put your hands together. After he fished all night with no result, he tapped into the king's economy through submission and a response to a word that is coming from the spirit. Now watch. You have to understand what multiplies money or resources. Because, listen to me, when you come into the kingdom of God, there is a factor I told you that causes things not to atrophy. And that factor is righteousness. That's why the kingdom is righteousness, joy, peace in the Holy I'm at jo Peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. All right. Okay. The Bible says that unto us, a child is born unto and, and of the increase of his kingdom. So when you, when you come into the kingdom, things don't die. Things increase. However, the earth system in which I'm going to allow us to see when this word cross entered the earth, all right, deterioration begins. That's why if I give you a million, it will end. But you see, when the factor comes on, so Jesus Christ came, met people hungry, 
they had loaves and fishes. If you share the loaves based on this economy, after five people, it will end. Am I talking here? But when it comes into the kingdom, a factor came on it. The Bible said that, and he broke, he broke the limitation, the deterioration, and then something mount, he looks up, and something mounts on it, and when it came out from the kingdom into the next physical realm, it never ends. Am I talking here? I say, am I talking here? So same thing. Peter's submission to allow the kingdom to step in his boat changed the perspective of his business. All right. And what they couldn't get with sweat equity, all right, with just hearing what to do, where to do, how to do, they caught fishes and stepped into a spiritual word called abundance. Because abundance is not a physical word. Okay? And sweat equity cannot tap into spiritual resource. All right? What will tap into it is a word. From, am I talking here? And word is a spiritual resource that can attract. You know, Juwani Abuana, come and put your hands together. I said, come and put your hands together. And they had to bake on. They had to call. They had to drag in because when you're dealing with, with, with the system of God, later I'm going to show you, you know, out of you shall the, 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 the families of the earth be blessed. Because what is in the mind of God is global prosperity. It's not you holding. It is something out of you should be able to, okay? So you have to understand what multiplies money. And, the, and what multiply resources instantly is a new economy. All right. So when you come naturally to begin to talk, all right, okay, and I've made this analogy, all right, that the economy that your money, you know, operates in determines the return on that money. That's why some people can take what they have and then maybe, you know, with their phone or another economy, Dow Jones and all of this, and then send Okay, because now it's a, another economy that mounts on their resources. That, am I talking in House of Refuge? All right. Now, the greatest challenge that some people have is that they are controlled by money. Money has become a master. What that means is that they have submitted to it. All right. And if you seek money and stop there, then money is going to be your master, because it becomes the source of your joy, source of your happiness, source of your livelihood. Meanwhile, there is only one source. Okay, and so when you pursue a, another source, then the original source they're supposed to supply to you shall suck you now. If you seek money, so it will decide how far you can go, how much you can accomplish. Money for your information is a terrible master. Money is not supposed to be chased. Money is supposed to chase you. So if you want a deliverance, you know, to money, is to know what masters money. And that's why when, you know, you have to hear what Jesus said. When Jesus said that, seek the kingdom and these things, resources and money will follow you. He's trying to tell you that this thing is oga over... That's what masters money. The economy. All right, okay. So when you know what masters money, that's the beginning of your deliverance. And once you find what masters money, the Bible says, seek it. Seek it. Okay, now you see, I'm saying this, and some people who didn't like that, seek it. And when you seek it, money will never limit you again, and the money will begin to work for you. I'm going to say some things today, and I said it before. You see, if God has allowed a thousand into your hand, you're not supposed to be broke if you're in this kingdom. If God has venture, money enters because he gave someone five, he gave someone two, he gave someone one. He so much believed that this one that I gave him is a salvation for his poverty. If he allows it into the economy, I'm not talking here. So five became ten, two become four. This is supposed to become two. And when it becomes two, it can become four. When it becomes four, it can become eight. Am I talking here? Am I talking here? Come on, put your hands together. 
Okay, but when you don't know what to do with it, you see, if, if a thousand enters into your hand, okay, knowing what to do. So once you find what masters money, you seek it. Money is actually mastered by economies. Never you allowed money to tell you. But when you look at the world, money tells people what to do. But listen to me, economies tells money what to do. Economy determine what comes out of the money. Economies. Money moves people around, but economies are moving monies around. So if you're able to now, because I'm trying to allow us into the kingdom economy, God, listen to me, did not give mankind money. What God gave mankind was an economy to run. Later you're going to see the definition of economy, the resources that a nation has. So you're going to see from the beginning. You want to know where we missed it and how to get back? You have to go back to the beginning. He never gave him money. He gave him, you see, if I give you gold, it's money I'm giving you. Am I talking here? You know, he gave him, all right, God. So when you're trying to have money, then you're going to end up working for money. But when you're able to understand the economy or the Eden's economy, then money begins to work for you. You must learn how the kingdom works and how kingdom wealth is released. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you must learn how the kingdom work. All right. No, say it with energy. Say, neighbor, you must learn how the kingdom work. All right. When you look at business experts, even as we come maybe into natural, okay, they, knows, they, they know that you, know, that you must make money to work for you. No business expert struggle work, no. He knows, and anytime money comes, they actually don't spend money anyhow. They, they have to allow the money to work. If they have a need, they will send the money to work so that the money will solve that. All right, when you have people, you see, poverty is from an unconscious mind. You see, manifestation doesn't come from conscious mind. Manifestation comes from unconscious mind. And there has to be a pressure for a word to get. That's why when you receive the word of God, if it doesn't go to your unconscious mind, you can't see result. Wealth is unconscious. You see, attitude, you know, there's a book by Malcolm, you know, Blink. Thinking without thinking. It's talking about unconscious. All right. And words are powerful. All right. I read a book, you know, you know words on water. You know, you know. In fact, it, was, it wasn't even spoken. It was written on two words. Terrible toxic words was written on a bottle. And then kind words were written, written for, on a bottle. And then they gave them time. The one that terrible words were written on became rotten. The one that kind words were written became fresh. I gave you a story. Okay, two bowls of rice. Two same bowls. All right, you come. One man, he speaks dirty word. Look at you, ugly. To one bowl. Another one's great. You're beautiful. After one week, this one that dirty words and toxic words were spoken, fungi started coming out. This still stayed fresh. Why? Because words are not natural. Come on, am I talking in house of refuge? Come on, put your hands together. I said, come on, put your hands together. I said, come on, put your hands together. Your kingdom is word activated. So, so if you can find the biggest economy and you put your money or your wealth in, your money will automatically reach its potential. Now, there's no economy on earth that can supersede the economy of God. Every earthly economy has a limit. In as much as we walk in it, that's what it's producing, even what it's producing. The Elon Musk, am I talking here? Okay, okay. But if you want to see, you see, when you take Naira and allow it to work in Nigeria's economy, you're going to see it. That's, that money is not maximized. Take that same Naira and move it into another economy, its potential goes a little bit higher. Take that same money and move it into another economy. The potential is also maximized. Am I talking here? I say, am I talking here? For your information, the kingdom of God is a country. I might come and put your hands together. I said, come, come and put your hands together. Few definitions, if you can help me. Economy 
is the wealth and resources of a country. It's actually talking about a total amount of resources that is being held or managed by a nation. However, economics, and that's where I'm going to be hidden, hidden, okay? Economics is actually when you are able to study the impact, listen to me, of decisions, underline the word decisions, and choices, underline the word choices, two words. These two words will change your life forever. So when you talk of economics, it's actually a study of the, the impact in which either a micro or a macro. Micro, you know, is on a family level because families have economies. Macro is nations have economies, okay? Okay, but, okay, but what actually impact economy are actually not the resources, it's the choices that individual makes. All right, okay, on how to allocate these resources so that it can satisfy your wants and needs. When you don't know how to make good choices and decisions, your wants and your needs will have, okay, so economics is your ability to sit down and study and find out which economy will I begin to make, what do I do with the resources, because you have to know that resources are given to you. And if resources are given to you, you don't work for it, it's given. He called five, one, he gave five. He, called, he, he gave, all right. Now, the third definition that you have to know is now what you are becoming. When you become an economist, okay, an economist, give me that, okay, makes is the person that has the ability to be able to sit down and observe and know. Makes observations and then know how to make predictions about the impact of macro, macro, talking about nation, or micro choices when it comes to the management of those resources. Yes. Okay. You don't walk in this life just like that, casual and dumb. Your choices and your decisions are important. All right? And the choices and the decisions are actually supposed to mount on the management of resources because God is going to allow something to come into your hand. If a thousand enters into your hand, well, their choices and the decision and management of that thing will determine what happens to that. If, if am I talking here? Okay, now when you look at this, the the, the economics and the economics, you, you have, you, uh, there is a common denominator there. The common denominator is about, listen to me, decisions and choices. Never mention money. Decisions and choices. So we can easily say, and I think I give you, economics then fundamentally, Oh my, this is... In fact, I can go home. If you are broke or you are rich, it's fundamentally about decisions and about choices. You can decide to oppress people with Ashobi or you can decide to take that 50,000, don't eat it, send it to work. And then later you can buy even other people I should be while the money is still working. Choices on how you manage what is given to you or released to you. And later, you know, you know, you know. So it's not about, listen to me, how much you have. You can complain that the money given to you is more. It's not about that. It's never about the amount. Never about how much you have. It's actually about what you do with what you have. It's in the decisions and then the choices. It's not about how much money you make. No. It's about what you make with the money. Oh, no, no. Kai. Kai. It's not about how much money you make. It's about how, what you make with the money. All right. Money can continue. Ah, mutune, mutune. Eat it. You eat it and have the seeds in. 
Eat, eat it. And I'm going to disabuse the reason for war, envy, and things like that. Some, some of you think that resources will finish. That's why I call jealousy. Even okay, ah, yeah, and Kaushi, couldn't they carry? No, God never made the earth for any resource to finish. In fact, the system that God puts in place is that the more you use it properly under divine instruction, the more it increases. <laughs> Let me help you, Boku Gadeba. The first place where God put man is called what? Not Eden. It's called what? Garden of Eden. What do you have? And it's an analogy. What do you have in gardens? Fruits. When you have this fruit and it's not eaten, it's not going to multiply. Fruits, when you eat, you activate the seed. Except if you eat the seed. Because immediately, and when you eat one seed and kair, it's not one fruit that is going to come out. You can take, tell the fruit on a seed, but you can never tell of the, the seed in the fruit. Okay, how many of you can say by Kunkoji, Kongo Kunji, Ocha, Mongol, Mongol, whether in Hong or things like that? You know, Mesa, Koi, Mong, it at a Mongol, in a somber Baba Nation, Kaba, Bamish, Babu, Yara, and Suzo Sata. You understand? You're thinking Kana Sata, but you're activating a law that God has put in the universe. And the more you eat it, the more it increases. So when Babylon comes in, it now enters into you, the more I hoard. Or the more people are taking it, the more it reduces. So that's where war comes in. And control comes in. But that's not the system of God. Nobody can exhaust the resources that God has put on earth. Am I talking here? I said, am I talking here? Okay, okay. So, if there is global poverty, it's tied to two words. Choices and decisions. Either by macro nations, leaders. Look at what happened. And it's words. I told you words, right? I told you words, right? Tinibu came, stood, took oath, became president. Then a word came out. Word. The wealth of the nation went down. In 30 seconds. Because when he spoke, it's a spiritual resource. Subsidy gone. That's all. Up to today, multinationals were bailing, are bailing out. Almost everybody is having losses. Multi-choice have to revert back to old subscription. Why? One man just spoke a word based on wrong decisions and wrong choices. It's not money. It's not resource. It's not it's not resources. So you cannot say that I don't have money. No. You can't say that they pay me less. No. You can't say that Abundan Abani Mabai is any chi. No. It's not the money you make, it's what you make the money to do. And it's tied to a choice. And it's tied to a decision. Ah, somebody Come on, put your hands together if you understand what I'm talking about. I said, come on, put your hands together. All right. So, so we're dealing with Eden's economics or kingdom economics. So what's that? When you are talking about Eden's economy or kingdom's economy, you know, it actually describes, okay, <laughs> you guys will be, you, in fact, you will take me out for, for dinner after, you, you will thank God you are in church. Kingdom economics or Eden's economics describes, underline the word God's original intent. Anytime you, you see the word intent of God, it's actually talking about two words, purpose and his plans. God didn't just yafter. How did you come? Yakao kakawai and then duni No, there is there has been an intent in his heart. 
for the humans. All right. So he's intent for human prosperity. And progress. But the human prosperity and progress are coded in principles, in policies, and in practices. That's why he said that when I give you the kingdom, I'm going to give you keys to unlock the kingdom of heaven. If you don't understand the principles, the policies, and the practices, you might not understand his intent. Because the plan is in you knowing this thing. But the intent is the original thing he had in his mind. And what actually happened is that those practices, when you begin to do that, you're going to experience family, microeconomics, or nation, macroeconomy. That's why the problem with Africa is leadership. The choices and the decisions that the leaders make. And later I'm going to show you there's no government on earth that can ever make decisions that can activate the kingdom of God. Or the resources of heaven. And any, any decision that is not divine will lead to poverty. That's why there is poverty everywhere. Am I talking here? I say, am I talking here? I say, am I talking here? So, microeconomics, okay, individual, you and yourself, macro nations. All right. But you have to understand, you know, when you're dealing with, with intents. So, Eden's economics. When you look at it, it's actually a way of thinking. It's a paradigm. Hush. I don't know. But it's a, it's a paradigm. It's actually a perspective. It's a way of viewing life. It's a way of viewing your organization. It's a way of viewing your business, your ventures. Is a way of viewing your opportunities. How you view it will determine whether it will serve you extremely well and enable you to make some very smart choices. Okay, I think I gave that. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a paradigm. Hey! It's a, it's a paradigm. And if the paradigm doesn't shift, And sometimes you have to shift in a moment. I don't know what even informed Peter. Just like that boy, shifted. It's a way of thinking. All right. When you look globally, generally you could, you could agree with me that there's poverty globally, right? It's real. Everywhere. While we refuse to participate, you know, the church have not actually trained us in kingdom economics. Never. While there is global poverty, you have to understand, however, God had, you have to know that he had a purpose and he had a plan. So what is going on now? Is it his purpose or his plan? We don't know. We have to know. He has a purpose and plan, okay? So when you're dealing with the purpose, purpose, actually, God's purpose, listen to me, is his original intent. God's purpose is in original intent. And we're going to find out. You have to discover it. And if you're going to discover it, you must start with the original man. You want to know what was in the mind of God, you have to go to the beginning. Beninging. You have to go to the beninging. Have you been to beninging? You have to go back to beninging. When you go back to beninging, <laughs> beginning, that's when you meet the purpose. However, when the purpose is growing, there is a plan. No, I've not, I've not asked you to give me the verse yet. So, so if he has an intention, how will the plan come? So the plan includes principles, policies, practices. That's why when Jesus Christ says that, it, it, it pleased the Father to give you the kingdom. 
And I will also give you the keys, principles, policies. Okay, all right, okay. Now, now these principles, policies, and practices will open you up or lend you to what we call holistic prosperity. Holistic prosperity is the prosperity of your spirit, your soul, and your body. I wish above all that you prosper, even as your soul prospered. But the prosperity, the material prosperity, and the spiritual prosperity is coded in policies, principles, and practices. There's a culture of the kingdom, you all. So these principles, policies, and practices are actually the plan to the prosperity that God had in mind. If you don't get it, the principle, the plan, okay, then you miss it. And where do I see the principle, policy, and the plan? In his word. And when you go to the word, the principle plans are, are coded. Because the kingdom is like a man feel hidden. And he's speaking parables. Why do you speak parables? For you is given for you to know. But for them. Am I talking here? That's why the kingdoms of this world cannot access. Look at even the few ones that they are accessing. Look at the craziness. No heart. All right. When you look at this. That will allow you to know, you see, so the plan, the process allows you into holistic. Every verse in the Bible, every book that you read, every, the narrative reveals this truth that God has an intent of prosperity and the plan is tied to it. Every. Even some of you are shouting miracles. Why? The miracles also have economic connotations to it it's not just because you okay all right every okay there are economic implications present in everything you would read in the entire bible how do i know when jesus came the deaf the dumb the blind the demoniacs the all right the mad people there's one word that they call them beggars Beggars are at the lower echelon of an economy. So when he heals them, what happened? Overnight, their status changed. Because now they have migrated from beggars to now begin to take responsibility to take choices. Remember when I talked to you about Jesus coming into Jericho? Remember, he, he healed, uh, you know, blind back miles. The reason is because in the city, the economy is held in the hands of evil people, them Jairus. Okay, and so if he healed him, because now he will not beg again, he has to walk with his hand, then he has to fix the system. That's why he saved Jairus. And when he saved Jairus, look at what Jairus did. Because everything, everything, everybody, overnight, the economy of that city turned. Talking has a refuge. Am I talking here? Okay, so so the narrative, even even the healing, is economics. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Because you're gonna babia Allah, babia, and now come on, oh, you do Abu do. You should like babia. Babu, now you have muscles you can think and walk. Yeah, come on, put your hands together. I said, come on, put your hands together. Okay. When you see poverty. Am I helping people here? I say, am I helping people here? Poverty is actually the consequence of the curse that fell upon man in Genesis 3. Okay, now, but let's look at the mind of God. Genesis 1, 28. The first time the word curse entered into human vocabulary was in Genesis 3. In Genesis 1, 28, and God, look at what he said. And God cursed them. No, you're not talking. You're not here. I say, and God cursed them. No, and God, you're a chibro No. And God blessed them. 
Then he now spoke. Be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish. The earth. With what? I'm going to allow you into a resources. But when I allow you into the resources, you are supposed to take it and don't stay with it. Make sure it fills the earth. So the man that is blessed is supposed to take the resources and make the blessing to cover. So there's nothing like poverty taking over the earth. Okay, some, some of you are still looking at this verse with religious mindset. So here we see the original mandate for the original man. What's the mandate? Fill the earth. Subdue the earth. Bring the earth under your management. Who? The person that had God-like characteristics and God-like image. The man after the fall is not the man that God created. The only people that are supposed to take the resources and fill that are people with God-like image and God-like characteristics. I'm not talking here. The intent of God is people that have God-like characteristics and capacities Mankind in the beginning was God-like and he possessed God-like characteristics and he possessed God capacities. The only, that's why speech is spiritual. Not anything that God has created speaks. Forget about the, those, no, 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 no. Why? Because the spirit that was created came out in the imagination and was in there. Until he squeezed that and carried it. He gave the man a gift of speech. Because you will be satisfied with speech. You create. Okay, so now that you are in my class, I'm going to give you a mandate. Because you have my capacities. You have my... To manage, I'm going to allow you a resource. Fish, birds, animals. Everything. Creep. So the plan of God was for the man that is in the image of God and the likeness of God to multiply. Multiply what? Poverty? No, multiply what's on him. What's on him? I said, what's on him? I said, what's on him? And God blessed them. And not only should he multiply, he's supposed to fill the earth and then bring the earth under. Okay, now. When Genesis 3 came in, the word cause entered into human vocabulary. From Genesis 3 to Genesis 12, you will not hear the word blessing again. And when the word cause entered, cause is the power of entropy that causes everything to deteriorate. When the curse enters, sweat comes in and anything you hold dries up. Because a word enters. It's, it's, it's an entro power, entropy. Okay, so that man begins to battle against entropic forces that causes things and environment to deteriorate. So anything that you have begins to deteriorate. Anything you come in begins to deteriorate. So from Genesis 3 to Genesis 12, the word blessing disappeared from the earth. But in Genesis 12, because, listen to me, and that's why we're here. Why is it the gospel? The gospel is good news. What is the good news? If I come and say that I have good news for you, then it must be something good. Hey, good news. Hey, wow. Is it the good news? Good news. Hey, good news. Are you hearing hear what I'm talking about? Okay, so you, you have to understand, okay? So in Genesis 12, it came back into the world when God begins to make a promise to Abraham. Now give me Genesis 
12. And when he made that promise, he induced in Abraham global prosperity. And I will make of thee a great nation. <laughs> Put your name there. And I will what? You see, this word appeared again. Why? Because when you're talking about purpose and intentions of God, is that no matter what happened, I must get what I started from the beginning. And I will make your name great. And you will be a blessing. Next verse. And I will make, and I will bless them that bless you and cause them that cause you. And in thee, look at it. Oh! Well, here is given a promise of Jesus because now, because God wants all the earth in blessings. Come and put your hands together. Jesus didn't just come just for eternal life, which is vital, but he came for a reason, for a purpose. Something was lost. It's not, I said something was lost. So this word appeared again. Go and study your Bible. So God wants every family of the earth to be blessed. God is not excited about your poverty. No. If you say that God made you poor, it's contrary to what we read in the Bible. What God wants is the earth to be blessed and the earth, listen to me, to be under godly management. The reason why we are now is because it's not under godly management. So in the mind of God, that's his plan from the beginning. That is why this word gospel was introduced. But the word gospel is good news. But there is gospel of everything. But now he now, for this purpose, I came so that I can proclaim the gospel of the kingdom qualification of God. The kingdom of God is the intention of God. And what is the intention of God? So gospel of the kingdom is the message that Jesus preached in his earthly ministry. In other words, he's trying to tell you. Good news. What's the good news? What you lost in the beginning, I brought it back. What did you lose in the beginning? That God-like humans with godly capacities must have management of the earth. Not to run to heaven. Later I'm going to show you. Heaven and earth is never created to walk apart from each other. They are one and the same side of the coin. That's why when he is speaking, this is how he says, in the beginning God created heavens and what? Earth. And if you don't understand, the spiritual and physical. Alright. So gospel of the kingdom is the message that Jesus Christ. So the gospel of the kingdom, listen to me, is that God will get in the end what he wanted from the beginning. When he said, in thee shall all the families, he's actually talking about Jesus, shall be blessed. So when Jesus arrived, the beginning just arrived. So when he arrived, the beginning is in me, the end. So in the end of times, we are returning to the beginning. So in Revelation, he said, I am Alpha and Omega. You don't have beginning and end in the same point when you have a straight line. The only time you have beginning and the end at the same point is when you have a cycle. That's why he's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. So he's trying to tell you when I arrive now, the full cycle is complete. Now get ready because you are going to be transported into the, and I will get what I wanted from the beginning. What do I want from the beginning? That God-like humans will be under the management, will manage the resources. 
So if God wanted in the beginning for all the families of the earth to be blessed, guess what? It has returned. If God wanted in the beginning that all the family of the earth, okay, and for the earth resources to be under godly management, guess what? So you can't say that, am I talking in house of refuge? Yes. Then God is going to get that. Revelation 21, Jesus called himself Alpha Omega. It's not a prayer point. Jehovah Omega, Jehovah. No, 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 no. It's not a prayer point. It's trying to tell you that we have come full cycle. And you have to wake up and be convinced about something. Tene Alpha, Tene Omega. You're the beginning. Unchangeable changer. He's speaking about the full cycle of God's intent and his eternal purpose. He's trying to tell you what was lost in the beginning has arrived. I'm the beginning of the end. I'm bringing it. He's declaring the fact that whatever God wanted in the beginning, that's what he's going to get. What does he want from the beginning? You must know. Look at your neighbor and say, you must know. So what does he want in the beginning? God in the beginning wanted the earth and its resources under godly leadership. You have to know. God in the, God in the beginning wanted the earth. You have to know. You have to go back. He wants it under godly leadership and management. And guess what? That's exactly what he's going to get. And how? That's why he put the kingdom in you. You have to wake up. When you don't wake up, God has a purpose and he has a plan. That plan is complete with principles, policies, and practice for your economic prosperity and generational progress. You have to, you have to be convinced. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, wake up to it. Okay. If not, so what's the good news? Some of you are thinking, Babu Nyuwa, Babu Nyuwa, Achansama. You're thinking that's the good news. No, that's not. <laughs> am I talking here? I say, am I talking here? Yes. So what he's saying is this. If I align myself with his kingdom, then the provisions and the resources are available to me because the resources and the provisions are only supposed to be under godly management under humans with godlike characteristics all right so when you're dealing with kingdom listen to me stop as a kingdom citizen asking god to bless what you are doing find out what he is doing because what he's doing is already blessed. If you're managing resources, it's already blessed. And God takes it against you and makes sure that you prosper and succeed. He will fight for you. If you're holding and holding, you're not in his intent. If you're making the families of... Don't waste... Yes, asking God to bless what you're doing. Figure out what he has blessed and join. And God has passion to see that his kingdom fills the earth. So when you look at the economic and, and, and of families, the condition of families, nations, and business, when you look at the regional economies of people, when you look at it, it's actually, listen to me, it's the reflection of the decisions and choices, not the reflection of the resources that is there. That's why all of you will just say, there's no reason why Nigeria will be poor. Why? The resources are there. Why are we poor? So it's not the reflection of the resources, it's the reflection of what? The choices and the decisions. Why? It's not under godly management. So if you look at nations, bring it down to micro, your life. Your families. So when you're dealing with kingdom economies, in the beginning, God wanted the resources of the earth to be under spiritual management and godlike management. Resources don't respond to physical. That's why no government can give you it. It will never open. It will not. 
There will be corruption. There will be bad leadership. So he told Adam, and as you're going, because you have my, my characteristics, some of these resources will want to fight. Subdue it. Force it to subjection. Bring it under it. And when you bring it, it means it's under me. Because you are my representation. Take the companies. Get the wealth. Because I know when you have it, families of the earth will be blessed. Am I talking in house of refuge? Am I talking here? Come on, put your hands together. So he told Adam, subdue. Bring it. God made Adam to become the steward of the earth. While God himself retained the ownership of the earth. And if you don't understand that and know it, you're going to have serious problems. So when you look at the state of the world, it's not actually reflecting where God put us in. It looks like the earth is subduing us. We're not subduing it. Look at leaves are controlling you. That some of you bottle is messing your life around. Sex, you can handle. Needle in the night, you're on the edge. Affecting your mind and never giving you clear way of thinking. So the, your decision is messed up. Resources are, all right. Poor choices, bad leadership. All right. And whenever it's not under godly leadership. So economic principles and policies and practices, listen to me. Whether it's your business, whether it's your family, or whether, you know, when you begin to make decisions on your money that is void of, listen to me, of divine instruction it will always lead you to poverty all right so you call anything the god you are not expanding expanding back kana to nani kai kai and then got evil heart back as anybody your problem okay now look at look at proverbs 13:18 am i helping i say am i helping you i'm telling you you must pay me after church Look at Proverbs 13. Give me another version. Dakabani, Dakwen, you King James. But look at it. Why is the man poor? No, New King James. Riches. But a poor man, another person, he said, hated instructions. When you hate policies, godly instruction, divine instruction, you will be poor. Why? Wealth responds to instructions, words. I'm bringing it to your close. How many of you are happier than church? A poor man, he doesn't hear. It's not necessarily threat. He has no threat. You know, it's instruction. Another version said, even New King James. Buy a gene instruction. I can't have a Bible. By the way, see, he does what he wants to do. You'll be broke. You'll be poor. A poor man doesn't heed to instruction. Now watch. Are you happy in church? We're dealing with kingdom economics. There is something that multiplies your money. That's economics. Now, heaven on the earth was the original intention. How do I know? That was what happened in the beginning. That's why the Bible said that Jesus, you know, God comes to earth without even knowing he left heaven. In the cool of the day. Because heaven and the earth was together. How do I know? Jesus said, if you pray, desire and pray, let heaven come to earth. Because while you are on earth, 
you're supposed to be on earth, but not off, operating an economy that is contradistinctive to other people that are outside of where heaven is making. Yeah. So Matthew 6, 10 said that, Thy kingdom, come. Come where? So you have to understand the relationship between heaven and earth. In the beginning, God created heavens and the earth. What that means is that heaven and the earth are supposed to function together. How do I know? That's why he could come casually. Yes, you go. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. Can I come on here? Casually. Heaven and the earth is supposed to work together. So this is what actually is about. Listen to me. Heaven gives meaning to the earth. While the earth gives expression to heaven. Material is supposed to come from the spirit. And then the spirit is supposed to allow you to see the expression of the earth. Oh, somebody they got him in effort ever. What that means is that heaven and earth are two sides of the same coin. This is what it means. That's why if you are sensual, carnal, sap, sakiko, you will not receive anything of this. You can't understand. Why? The spiritual gives meaning to the material. While the material gives expression to the spiritual. So when I see you in the physical, I'm supposed to be expressions of heaven. That's what I'm talking here. I'm supposed to see expressions of what is in heaven. Because they are same side of the same coin. Let me help you. What that means is that heaven is the original domain. The earth is the first cause out of that domain. Nothing that is made that, am I talking here? That is made without what? The word. So the cause of the heavens is the earth. Is the first cause. Am I talking here? So that's why he now picked people with his character to manage so that the earth will reflect heaven and heaven will impress on the earth. Uh, come on, put your hands together. My time is up. I said, come on, put your hands together. I said, come on, put your hands together. So what that means is that when you, you cannot be prosperous if you don't value godly principles godly policies and godly economic practices what that means is this look at me whenever you have money that doesn't have a meaning or a mission then it's ungodly am I talking here yes whenever you have assets that doesn't have assignment then it's ungodly Whenever you have prosperity that doesn't have purpose, then it's ungodly. Am I talking here? Yes. Because you have to understand the reason why. You don't get money for money's sake. You get money as a leverage and as a tool to carry out a mission. Through you, all the families of the earth. There has to be, you have to have. Kingdom come. The knowledge of God will fill the earth like waters. You cannot move when you're not on what he has blessed. You don't get money. So the money must have meaning if it's going to be kingdom economics. And the economy of God is, <laughs> the money must have meaning. That's, listen to me. That's why, and I'm going to sit down. You need divine counsel or divine 
instruction on prosperity. When you don't have divine counsel and divine instructions, let me show you what's going to happen. Give me Psalms 107, verse 10 to 11. When I'm a some the options. And I'm gonna we are supposed to have built our media, our the options. How can I be so held up with one abuna? Look at it. Others sat in darkness and in gloom. Some are prisoners and in chains. Let's go. Why? Why? They rebel against God's instructions and they despise. Other versions say they spawn. Look at it. The counsel. When you rebel the counsel, the word, the instruction, the policy, the principles. Listen to me. What's going to happen? You know, it's nothing. You will always, it will always take you to a place of darkness. You always be in shadow of death. You're going to be in affliction. You're going to be in prison. And you're going to be in iron bondage. Or in iron. I don't see any definition of bondage that passes this. In fact, let's see what King James say, says. What does it enter? But this one is clear. Divine counsel on your money, on your prosperity. Because they re rebel against the word of God. And then contempt the counsel. The, counsel. the version that I, they spawn. Divine instruction. The counsel of the Most High. Now look at what's going to happen. Next verse. Let's go. So they're going to come down. Into labor. Take the farmer can I beat it. The air. Sweat equity. Why? Because money moves by words and instructions. And then they will fall down. None to help. There will be chains and then irons. So when you rebel against God's word and spawn his counsel, you will always, always take you to a place called darkness, shadow, death, affliction. So kingdom economics, I'm going to sit down. It's God's original purpose for man. What's the God's original purpose? That God like will manage the resources. Alright. So if that's going to happen, then something about him in that kingdom must come. So that's why he, he put blessing. Righteousness is on it. The word cost is taken. Cause is the entropy that causes deterioration. So whatsoever you begin to do prospers. The, your path shines brighter. Your thought is blessed. And it's increased. Why? Of the increase of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Am I talking here? I say, am I talking here? All right, okay. So when you're dealing with this, actually, God is trying to take you. Can you be so stupid to step on and respond to a word and come under <laughs> this? You don't want chains. You don't want darkness. You don't want poverty. You don't want... Then instructions. Instruction. I'm not talking about manipulation. I'm talking about seeking first the kingdom of God. The policies, the principles... The practice. There is a culture of the kingdom. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. I say, come on, put your hands together. Now listen to me. Listen to me. When you anything that you have, in fact, double it's not what we want. And for what is in your account or in your hand to double is a choice and a decision. You can't be under the hand of God and things not multiply. It's not resources, it's the choices. Can you one time 
put a throat, a knife at your throat. Why are you confused that they will say that now repeating Kaya So why na you not judging Kaya kind of cooking a sour? I hear what I'm talking about. Why is this you don't get the gari? Take that money and allow your kingdom to walk on it. Make a choice. Make a decision. Come and put your hands together. I said, come and put your hands together. And you're not doing it based on Babylonian economic system. You're doing it because the kingdom is on, in you. There's something that you don't see that will mount on it. You're somebody that loves instructions, divine counsel. The cross is broken. You, nobody here has a cross. Nobody. You cannot have a cross. Yeah, somebody said that. I'm going to say that a breaking mean cross. Which cross? How do you have cross? Where, where did you get it? The only time you operate is you attach yourself to something that is cost, not you. When you tie yourself to something that is going down, in the world, do say rua, manage your casa, do say ba, in the camera do say, zaku your casa deme, do say. You understand? Yes. You can't be cost. Was. How can you be in Christ and be cursed? Because if any man be in Christ, there appear. N-E-W. What's the meaning of new? Yeah. Not refurbished. Not renovated. There appear a renovated. There appear a refurbished. No. What is new, it means it has never ha appeared. It's just appearing. So how can something that just appeared have a cause? Meanwhile, it appeared manufactured in heaven. Plucked out from a kingdom, translated into a kingdom. Died with Christ, rose with him. How can you have a cause? Come on, put your hands together. I bind causes. I break, I bind causes. Which cause? Tell me, which cause? Generational causes. Gener which generation? You are no more in that stock. New. I'm not saying biologically something, okay, but when you are conscious of who you are, everything stops and ends. I'm not talking in house of refuge. Come on, put your hands together. I say, come on, put your hands together. Your lack of knowledge get permission to a lie, to move. And then it takes advantage of your mouth because you're a spiritual and cause it to begin to come. Because death and life is tied up to your tongue. And you are snared, taken captive by your mouth. That's what the Bible says. Why? When the new thing stands, his words respond on earth and in heaven. And whatsoever you bind, and then you open your mouth, and then you release hell. Because that's what they want open. You can be cursed. I say you can be cursed. Come on, put your hands together. I say you can be cursed. 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 When man is in Christ, a new creation appears. When you wake up to the realization, nothing on earth can hold you. Am I talking in house of refuge? That's why sickness is coming to an end. Depression is coming to an end. Lack is coming to an end in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Through you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. We demand that the words of this kingdom begin to find a place, a root it begins to grow and begin to give expressions in the name of Jesus. We demand that the works of your hands prosper. Whatsoever you do, begin to exceedingly 